good, uh, well, it's morning actually here where I am. I'm here in Mallorca, a sunny part of Mallorca in a place called Andrach. I'm here with Mark Lawrenson. Morning. Mark, you all right? I'm good. A bit hot. It is, but, isn't it? You know, which, you, part, which part of August, August did you get? You, you chose August to I, come away. So I certainly did. What do you expect? So, um, Mark, obviously, a uh, former Liverpool player, was in fact, which I, when, I, when I did my homework, Mark. That's the first, Rich. Yeah, I know. You're... Uh, at the time, you were their highest um, or their record signing, nine hundred thousand. I've been told nineteen eighty one, and it was nine hundred thousand plus VAT. Yeah, which took it over a million. And I was then, um, people tell me, the third most expensive transfer in well, what would have been the football league, wouldn't it? I think Trevor Francis. Oh yeah, Trevor and then Francis. the lad uh, from uh, Steve Daly. Would you remember Man him? City? He Man went, City. He went, yeah. Wolves to Man City or Man City Wolves, Wolves? to Man City. Wolves okay. to Man City. So I was, I was the third. And the day I signed for Liverpool, I could have signed for Man U and Arsenal. Mark. I know. Sorry to disagree. You know I'm an Arsenal man. I do. But listen, Terry Neal was manager of Arsenal and he offered me less money than I was on at Brighton. But I had a 10-year contract at Brighton, which obviously was a selling club. And um, Ron Atkinson had just taken over at Man U. And he said, I'll give you more money than Liverpool are giving you. But Liverpool had just won the uh, European Cup as it was then. So I was only going one place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you a Liverpool fan? Uh, I'm a Liverpool fan, yeah. But Preston North End. Preston's where you started your career at Preston, right? That's where, that's where my dad played. Okay. Um, I've got a picture at home. My dad made his debut, White Hart Lane. And um, there are three people on the, on the photo. So there's my dad, Sir Tom Finney. And Sir Alf Ramsey was playing for Tottenham. Wow. Yeah, it is a bit of a wow. That is a bit of a wow. Mm. It is a bit of a wow. So, start your career at Preston, move to Brighton, then move to, obviously, Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So, the, the idea of today's conversation is, obviously, we, we're quite keen to, to find out what your thoughts are on Liverpool when you were playing, yeah. to Liverpool today, because, obviously, Liverpool just won the Premier League, first time in 30 years. You just actually left... Or you, well, you hadn't left, but you unfortunately had to retire for yeah, injury yeah, yeah, yeah. just before they last won it in 1990. Sure. Well, <clears throat> I think the, the big thing is, I think Liverpool of today are very similar to, to our Liverpool 80s team. Um, and the manager has just been, he's just been fabulous because basically Jurgen Klopp has, has improved every single player. And if you're buying really good players in the first place, you're turning them into world-class players. So... Um, he's a he's a massive part of the football club. He he gets the history. It's like those old boys like who go and, and work and stuff like that. He welcomes you with open arms. Whereas in the past, one or two of the managers were a little bit like, well, you know, that was gone. That's, that's but he loves all that. And I think he says to his players like, you know, these lads look what they want. That's what we've got to do. So he just gets the supporters love the way he plays. Um, and I remember. Um, Ben Teke, before he left, before he got sold, Ben Teke did one of the first interviews about Jurgen Klopp. And he said, he's your friend, but he's not your best friend, which I think for a manager is a, a, a really good kind of thing to have. Definitely. Yeah, perfect. Mm. So you worked under uh, Bob Paisley, yeah. Joe Fagan, yeah. and Kenny Daglish, yeah. which, you know, from a Liverpool uh, supporters' point of view and Liverpool history point of view, are huge managers, great mm. managers, you know, you know. Yeah. legends of the club well I mean um, when, when it was Bob who signed me and I could tell you endless stories about him but the, the best one would be and, and Bob <clears throat> never finished a sentence never ever finished a sentence so we had to kind of guess what he was saying to you but that's it was like your granddad in charge of the team I signed on a, on a Friday night August 81 and I stayed in a hotel right by a library buildings in Liverpool and he said, he said I'll come pick you up in the morning I'll take to the ground and stuff medical and all that kind of stuff and everything so I never slept but it, and it was only 35 miles from home for me from, from living St. Anne's and stuff so it was all good and uh, the concierge in the hotel rang me said Mr Pace is waiting for you outside so I'm down and got my suit on and everything first appearances and, and what have you and as I came out of the hotel he got out of his car it was like a gold Ford Granada and I mean you can imagine that nowadays yeah. probably. and straight away he had his cardigan on, right? And I thought, mm -hmm. interesting. And his slippers. <laughs> you know, he'd just won the European Cup about six weeks before. This was the kind of guy he was. And he'd obviously had egg for breakfast because it was down the front. <laughs> Brilliant. It was fab. And I just went, yeah, I said to myself, like, 
this is my club. It, it was great. And he was, <clears throat> he was, Paisley was a, such a way that he didn't talk to you about the game unless he thought you weren't A, playing well or B, doing what he wanted to do. And I think the reason for his success as much as anything was he brought players to play in the system, which not necessarily were the best players at the time, but <clears throat> it made the system work. So, and, and Joe was his lieutenant, Joe Fagan. Everybody loved Joe Fagan. And as, when he was assistant manager, he, um, he was just, he'd whisper in your ear and he was, he'd speak to you very, very quietly and you had to kind of lean in to listen to him and he, he saw everything. He just honestly saw everything. And Ronnie Moran was with him. He was a sergeant major. Ronnie, Ronnie Moran was only happy when he was unhappy. But you know, that was about obviously the team winning. But um, yeah, Bob was great. He was absolutely fabulous. And I, I hadn't been there that long. Probably only played about half a dozen games. We played Arsenal away. Sorry about this. And we beat you 2 1 or 2 0. And we were on match of the day that night. And Jimmy Hill was doing it, dear old Jimmy. And I just came out with a ball a couple of times and one thing and another. And Jimmy did this big piece on me, the analysis. So Monday morning, I go into training and we're walking at across at Melwood to play to uh, start training and, and Bob just said to me, he said, um, did you see match of the day on Saturday night? And I did. I mean, I, I thought maybe he was testing whether I'd gone out and had a few beers and I said, yeah boss, I did. He went, so did everybody else. And as in, they knew and saw what you were doing, so just be careful in the future. Yeah. That's that's the way that he was. He, he just was. And, and Joe, Joe was unlucky because obviously he only did two years and he was a broken man after high school and who wouldn't have been? But uh, Everybody in that football club loved Joe Fagan. Graham Souness was our captain. And when Joe got the job, one or two of the local newspapers were saying, there's no way he's going to be like Bob Paisley. And I think we won three, three trophies in his first year. And Graham Souness came out from his office the very first day of pre-season and just said, you know, we're, we're going to try and win everything this fella, for this fella. And that's, everybody loved him, really seriously loved him. And... I didn't see him too many times after he left. He kind of stayed away a little bit. But uh, when he walked in the building, everybody was like, he just like, give a big hug. He was just a top, top bloke. And then Kenny? King Kenny. Well, well crikey. So, so there was Hanson, Kenny, me, Ronnie Whelan, lived in Southport, still do. And we took it in turns to drive in and all those, those kind of things. And um, Kenny was... He was never going to be a media darling, but if you, I don't know if you ever met him, but he's actually, no, he's, he's really, not. Richie's really funny, yeah. and he takes the you-know-what out of everybody, but he just never came across as a manager, he hated it, he hated that side of it, but um, the first season he got the job, I'd, um, it was after high school, obviously when Joe, Joe had left and everything that happened at high school, and I'd dislocate my shoulder within 30 seconds of playing in the game, so I'd gone and had an op, and I couldn't train, and... I presume that the guy who'd done the op, uh, Mr. Mr. Kerr, what's his name? Calvin, had told the football club I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even run because I was just in the sling and I had a big operation here. And then a fellow rang me from Ireland and said, could you come over and just coach for a couple of days? I said, yeah, of course I can. I said, but I can't do any running. He said, no, I just want you over. Well, it overlapped on the first day back of training. Oh, my God. No mobile phones in those days. Kenny was ringing my missus, going absolutely berserk. Where is he? And uh, Vanessa was saying, like, well, he's, he can't train. Where is he? He should be here. He should be here. So when I got back, I got it. But this was a fellow that we used to drive in with every day. So we knew straight away. I remember me and Hanson saying, Crikey, we're going to have no problem with him because he's definitely made the, dif the difference from player to, to manager. But, of course, he was player manager as well, yeah. Your relationship with, um, with Alan Hanson and your, sort of your relationship, obviously, off the field and on the field... Mm -hmm. Um, on a football footballing terms, was probably one of the best centre half parents I think we've seen in a long while. I mean, I know it's hard for you to sort of say that. They but say so. They say so. Yeah, Al, it, it was the game was too easy for Al. He played he played golf, squash, and football for Scotland. It was just anything was too easy. You know what we found out many years after we finished playing, we both did Latin at school, which was just like a knob thing on it. <laughs> but Al would come off the pitch. You know, if you think about the pitches in those days, where it was called in mud, mud and everything. And Al would come off and he's just like, he'd just gone for a walk. And I'd come off full of snot and everything covered in mud. And he'd just like serenely walk off. And yeah, it was, it, it was so easy to play with. Um, and I would say, I mean, probably today, Van Dyke's up there with him. Virgil, I would say, would be up with him. They are, I would say, they are the best two that the football club have ever had. And, you know, they've had, they've had some good ones. But yeah, no, we had a great relationship. 
Um, good mates off the pitch. We didn't speak on the pitch as such. We didn't really feel the need to. I think we were both really, really quick. So if once all made a mistake, you could recover. And we kind of both knew what we were doing. Um, and the Ronnie Moran used to slaughter us all the time and just say, like, you two just sit in your armchairs all day. And we're like, oh, it's just another clean sheet. What more do you want, Ronnie? But, yeah, he's a, he's a top player, uh, and Alan, certainly. Um, the comparing the sort of the Liverpool sides to, to, to where you mm. played and, and obviously the Liverpool side today, um, Champions League winners the year before last, league winners this year. Um, you know, how does that, how do the two teams compare? You said earlier that they, they're playing wise, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, they play a different style because obviously football was, was strange in, in relation to what it is today, but um, it's just what, what they have to do. Is you know everyone wants to do this thing which which is the best Liverpool team or which is the best Liverpool team and all I ever say to people is is you know you might think it's present day you might think it's our team you might think it's one from the seventies when Shank was there and everything so, but but the, the bottom line for all <coughs> excuse me Liverpool supporters is 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 that you just got to keep winning over the years not just one year they've they've looked back they've started this team I think they'd be favourites to win the league. Uh, next season, no matter who Manchester City sign, um, but that's what they've got to do. So the great pantheon of teams is just keep winning, 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 winning. And if they do, because of the way they play as well, I think I think they will be put, go on and become the best team. They've been a little bit fortunate, insofar as the front three have hardly had an injury in the last three years, which is amazing when you when you look at players, especially strikers. So they've had a little bit of luck with that, but they're just a great team, and I think. You know, a lot of people say to me that who support other teams, they're like the favourite second team. Yeah. Um, and they're good to watch. You can't even if they're playing against your team, they are very, very good to watch. But he's, he doesn't take anything off anybody. Klopp, if you watch them train in, in pre season, he sometimes does three sessions a day. I mean, mad. And they're uh, they are super super fit. Maybe that's why they don't get injuries. I don't I don't know. So I know they're going away very shortly. Um, as we sat sit speaking here, they're going away for two weeks, just pre-season training. Well, they've hardly, they've hardly played any games since the end of last season. But that's he just he just drilled them. They're not fit. They're nowhere near fit. He doesn't he doesn't play them. He doesn't select them. So they know what the yards should be. And he, obviously, he he knew where the problems were in the team, didn't he? He obviously bought Allison yeah. as a goalkeeper. He bought the centre half Van Dyke. He had the front three. So and and I think probably out of all of the players that you've seen. Obviously, because he was, I think he voted player of the year, it was Jordan Henderson who's come on an absolute bundle. Yeah, and... no, Jordan's done great because I think people's criticism criticism of would be in his role was played sideways a lot, played back backwards as well a little bit, and he's just been a little bit more forward thinking this season, um, or has, I suppose it's gone now, and he's done it extremely well. But I think for me, and you know, he deserved his, his, his honour, etc., and the accolades, and also he was a great spokesperson in Covid for not just for Liverpool and the club but for everybody but it's like people people say how good is he I say well the only, the only thing for me is if you take him out of the team you can still win the league if you take Virgil van Dijk out of the team you don't win the league I mean Virgil was just as close as anybody could possibly ever be I understand why Jordan won it and he deserves it but Virgil van Dijk in that team was just I mean Massive because it's everything's built around him, mm. and it doesn't matter who he plays with, whether it's Matic, whether it's Joe Gomez, Lovren's obviously now gone. I think Fernand, uh, what's his name? Fernand, Fernandinho? Is it, no, who's the other, who's the one? No, I've got it wrong. Anyway, um, they can all play with him, and all I've done, and it just doesn't affect the team whatsoever. Fabinho, I'm on about. Sorry. Two well, I've, I've, and two <laughs> I see, I guess, funny enough, I watched Joe Gomez play for England against Spain actually in Sevilla mm. a couple of years ago. And I didn't really have too much of a clue of what he what he was as a player. I think he's going to be just fantastic oh, yeah. personally. I, I I mean that night he he ran that 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 back four that they had, and mm -hmm. obviously they were playing Spain, and we were three 0 up at half time, and everybody's looking. I'm the Spanish people looking at me, going, "This is England, right?" And I'm going, "Yeah, this is England. This is you know this is how how, how we've sort of progressed." Yeah. So I think yeah, I think he for me, um, obviously uh, left back. Whose name's gone out Robertson. there? No? Robertson and on the other side, uh, Trent Graham. Arnold. Yeah. I mean, you've got two left, well, the left and right backs there who are going to be there a long, long time, right? Well, I mean, yeah, and yet yeah, because it was a young kid, Nico Williams, yeah, who's, who's pushing 
uh, Trent now already, and I think Liverpool are trying to buy a young left back from Norwich. Yes, uh, the Northern Ireland international. So you can see, and that's basically. I mean, Trent doesn't need pushing. Robbo doesn't need pushing, but um, you know they're going to get somebody that pushes. That's but that's Klopp. He's kind of almost thinking, you know, eighteen months, two, three, four years down the road. Um, and I, and I would say, you know, there's one thing about the football club and, and the way they are is that the, the American owners have been fab because you can get some. You might say Cronker. Is he really interested, or is it the share price? Mm. Who, who knows? But but these these guys can sell the, the club for twice over now. But they just they love it, and I think the fact they've got a sporting franchise in in Boston make, makes a great deal of difference. And you know when Klopp really needed you know seventy five million to go and buy Allison, they went it's there, it's done, and they understand what sports all about. You mm. know they understand you have bad days, you get injuries, loss of form, all those kind of things. But um, they absolutely adore uh, the manager, and he basically just he runs the club. I think the. Going forward now for them, obviously now is to keep that level, isn't it? And to try and do what you guys did in mm. the in the eighties. You won three in a row. I think we talked earlier that you you won five out of six seasons that you were there. You won the double. Uh, you won the, you, the European Cup as it was then. Yeah. And so now they've got to keep that level, haven't they? They've just got to carry on. They should, they Sounds not easy, doesn't it? it? No, yeah, Sounds no, it's easy. Not. And it's not. Yeah, and I think that the thing is they're almost probably going to be a little bit victims of their own success in terms of. Who do they attract as players? Because if you're a striker, you're looking at the front three of obviously you know Mane and, and um, Firmino and Salah, and thinking I'm not going to get in the team. So that's a difficult one. Um, I say defensively, they look like they've started to address it, and you know they've got that many. They've probably got two sets of midfield players who are all very, very, very similar. So they the set up. Um, they're talking that he might not even sort of buy anyone. I just wondered whether I'm sorry about this, Rich. Whether you just go and try and nick a Bama Yang. Go. Come on, I've got some Kleenex over Come there. Come on, mate. You've, already, mean, you've already nicked one of ours. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Oxlade. So, yeah, yeah. Who's um, done great? Yeah. Because he had a really, really bad injury, and uh, he's done five and a half. The thing about Oxlade Chamberlain is, he's probably the only one of the six midfield players who looks like he's going to score a goal for you from midfield on a regular basis. And mm. Klopp, Klopp absolutely loves him. He loves his, he's like a real chirpy kind of character personality. So he likes all that. Let's just move away from, obviously, playing days. Unfortunately, you had to end your career with an injury. Uh, how old were you when you had to, when you had 29. to 29, which is really young. It, it, you know, listen, when I made my debut for Preston in front of my father and all my mates at school, I was, you could have said one game and you're done. And I, I would have loved that because that's all I ever wanted to do. So the rest was a bonus. I mean, I said to you before about, you know, going to Arsenal, going to Man United. I just went to Liverpool and it was like that different level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I was really, really lucky, really good players, really good team. And we just won loads of trophies. So, and that's what I said to the people at Brighton. Is that's the only re <clears throat> reason I wanted to leave is to just want to go and win some stuff. So, But you managed to make the change from a footballer, into becoming pundit, whatever you want to call it, into radio. Lots of people wouldn't call me a pundit, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, listen, yeah. You ha what I like about you is you have your opinion, yeah? yeah? It might be right, it might be wrong in some people's eyes, Absolutely. but everybody has an opinion on, on, on something, and um, as I say, whether you agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. You, you Probably sometimes people are so uh, saying the right things, if that makes sense. You know, I, yeah. I look at someone like Roy Keane right now, and I quite like Roy Keane because yeah, he says it how it different. is. And it's different. It's, it's not different. the same track. It's no. not the same track. Well, it's, and it's honest thing about the hair and all that kind of stuff. It, it, it's kind of... On, you, you upset people. I think one of the things is, sometimes a lot... I'm on Twitter, but I don't go on it that often because I could think there's some idiots on it. But And there are idiots on it. But it's like, if I have a point of view about something, and then people would say, you're bound to say that, you play for Liverpool. Well, no, it's got nothing to do with the fact that I play for Liverpool. It's just... It's just what you think? I mean, I don't do that much anymore. I kind of, I, well, I've just about signed a new contract with Dean for a year. I've got semi-retired, but I just, I like it, you know. And I mean, I go and watch Southport. They're in probably seventh tier now. Um, I go to Preston a lot. I obviously work at Liverpool, and you know, I mean, Netflix saved my life. <laughs> in, honestly, it did in, yeah. in in lockdown because I, I, you know, every day was the same, which we've all gone through as well. And we didn't know what day it was and stuff mm. like. That. Honestly, without Netflix, 
fuck knows what I'd have been doing. But it must be fun, you know, just to go and, you know, have your opinion on a game when you've been a player as well. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. it must be, you know, whether it be radio, I mean, TV and radio are obviously separate things, really, aren't they? You've got to love radio. Descri- yeah, I'm a, for, for, yeah, yeah. Know, I love radio too. But well, it's wordsmiths, aren't they? And the, and the guys mm. at Radio 5 are some great commentators, John Murray and, and, and all those kind of lads. And um, radio's just completely different, but I, I do think it's more fun. Telly is chewing gum to the eyes, isn't it? Basically. Um, and it's I think tell is easier, but you've got to just be kind of clipped. But with radio, you can well you can have a laugh as well, can't you? Have a bit of fun. Mm. And, you know, commentary is what two hours virtually now with all the stops and everything. So, but but it's good, yeah, yeah. I enjoy it. And um, lastly, let's talk about Mallorca because you've come here. How many years have you come here? Fifteen years now. So my daughter Ruby was two. So obviously now she's seventeen. So yeah, fifteen years. Same place. Absolutely. You can't see it actually, and I can't show you because if I put it to the window, you'll just uh, you'll get a reflection, I think, yeah, off yeah, the window. Yeah. But it's a beautiful. You you're, you live in a place called Andrach, mm. the, the, the port of Andrach, not the town. Mm-hmm. And it has a beautiful view across the bay uh, out into the sea. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and you, you'll be coming well, wherever, really, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. No, and uh, um, most of the family have just been and they've gone back. They just they had three or four weeks. Um, now we've obviously in lockdown and stuff but no I love it and I uh, know quite a few people here my Spanish isn't too bad so uh, well a restaurant Spanish put it that way Rich you know what it is so you're not going to do Spanish football commentary or anything like that anymore no? okay <laughs> um, <laughs> no so um, yeah no look, it's, it's, it's fabulous and the thing you know you jump on a plane from Liverpool or Manchester and it's just over two hours yeah. and, and you're sure. here and I just you know and I, I think the great thing not, not that I'm working for the tourist industry of Andrax, but it's still little known with a lot of people in England, which is fab. We, not being a snob, we don't get football shirts walking down the front of Andrax, which is, which is in many ways is good, but obviously it's a bit of a backhanded compliment from my point of view. And finally then, who's going to win the Premier League next year? I can't see anyone past Liverpool. Um, people forget as well with, with, with Man City, and I know they, they didn't really replace Vincent Kompany, but they lost nine games. In the league, I mean that's like virtually a quarter of the games, and Liverpool just don't. Even when they don't play well, they win. They don't even draw. That's the secret to winning it. Our team were exactly the same. We we scuffle one nil, and Liverpool adjust that way. And um, you know when when we came back from lockdown, and everyone's saying that you know win the league straight away, which we did virtually, and then you know get that over that hundred points. Players are not bothered about hundred points. Mm. You know, they were sat in the dressing room in August, back o- back of August, thinking if we win the league, fab. This is what, and I think that this achievement of winning the league is probably, I think, the best ever from any team because they were ninety six points season before last, lost by one point, and then this this time they won it by well, I think nearly twenty or whatever, and that is an unbelievable achievement. I know your 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 double team and stuff were absolutely brilliant. I think this lot were up there as well. Good, Mark. It's so good to see you. Uh, and uh, well, we'll have a beer one day. Yeah, yeah. It's your turn to buy. <laughs> well, my team win the league. How about that? No, you got no. <laughs> We're definitely not having that bet. If David Luiz is still giving goals away, well, maybe. Well, we did win the FA Cup. No, you did. Yeah. Huh? Looks manager looks like he's going to be all right. I think he'll be. Yeah, I think he'll do well. I think he'll do well. Um, it needed a change. We were a bit of a, a sleepy club and going in the wrong direction. Yeah. But, uh, but in saying that, I, think, I thought Wenger was a genius for, for a long time. But you're right, maybe he should have gone two or three years ago. But um, Arteta looks good. 